Hello. It's nice talking to you. I'm coming to give you an engineering report. It's about case switch for KNUST campus street lights. That is an efficient control of street lights. And this is presented by engineer John Kusi. I'm a field student and I'm also a senior tech instructor at Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. I'm a TP that is training professional engineer at Ghana Institutions of Engineering. I am a member of IEEE, that is Institute of Electrical and Electronic Engineering. International worldwide, yeah. I'm a certified energy audit practical professional by Ghana Energy Commission, SEC, MIDA, DESL, India. I'm energy efficiency expert, being trained by our energy center at KNUST here. Okay, it's nice talking to you. And I believe you find this presentation very insightful. Thank you. Please let's start the presentation. Then you know what is a case switch. Case switch is something that I have developed myself and is an efficient control of outdoor lights. It can also be modified to control a lot of things. Please let's start. Okay, so we are going to look at executive summary of what, I'm, what I've done, my project idea and concepts, project methodology that I used, the preliminary investigations that I did, budgeting, payback, and proposal that I wrote to KNUST, that is a vice chancellor. The, the VC was very helpful. I mean, uh, Professor Kwasi Ubri Danso was wonderful. And the then Pro VC, um, Professor Dixon, who is now the current VC, they, have, they were all very supportive. And their contributions was marvelous. And also, um, uh, Dr. Opoku from Mechanical and uh, Dr. Frimpon, now Professor Frimpon from Electrical Engineering Department, and also not forgotten my godfather, my godfather who also helped me a lot, very tremendous help with a lot of insights, engineering insights. That is Dr. Kweku Anto of Electrical Engineering Department. Say thank you very much for the wonderful thing and the insight you gave to me. Okay, let's continue. So, assembly of the device, we look at that. We also look at installation of the devices. Then, project results, and I also look at references. Okay, so before we continue, there's one lady I would like to also mention. The maintenance engineer at electrical, uh, so the maintenance engineer at the maintenance department KNUST, she too was very helpful in carrying out this work and also the electrical session at the maintenance department. That was a wonderful time with you. Thank you very much. Let's continue. Okay, so executive summary. The KNUST switch, dubbed K switch, was introduced by me, John Kusi. I'm a senior technician at Electrical and Electrical Engineering Department, KNUST. It is an efficient based, timing based switching device, but without a real timer. That means that there is no timer inside. It's just a program timer that I've done within the microcontrollers. And it also have an SMS switching control. That is an external control. And the concept was adopted by KNUST. After I 
was awarded the 2019 Care University Best Innovative Student Award. And it was implemented on a pilot-based approach on streetlights at the principal streets in Care University campus to promote demand side management, DSM policy of the nation. A preliminary investigation was conducted after assessments and 29 devices were installed in October 2019 and observed up to March 2020. The devices are currently in use and the installed devices were programmed to switch on at 5.30 p.m. and off at 6 o'clock a.m. in the morning. They can also be controlled through SMS as already indicated by sending an SMS code from a mobile phone, thereby reducing the usual 21 light usage hours of about 1307 150 watt LED lights that has been stored at KN University campus and is supposed to actually run for 12 and a half hours and it's amounting to so when we do that it's amounting to about 41 percent reduction in lighting usage hours okay so you look at the graph of that so that we understand and based on that i was able to save 46,659.9 kilowatt hour energy monthly every month the system is able to save that and the save is also translated to uh, an amount of uh, uh, what we call it uh, about 37,000 Ghana cities that is the monies that has been saved every month using the uh, the business tariff rate of 0.796 per kilowatt hour okay Okay, <clears throat> so the 37,141 is the monies that has been saved. So let's continue. Project idea and concepts. Manual switching of street lights is not efficient and it can result in lights staying on when not needed and off when needed. Care University has installed 1,307 street lights on its principal streets and important places, excluding minor streets, corridors, outside building lights, and also there are over 70 buildings on Care University campus with their individual outside lights and also which are also not and these are also not part of the survey that uh, I conducted with my team. Each of these installed street lights is 150 watts, making a total load of 196.050 watts, which consumes 196.05 kilowatts in every hour. And this is just about 1307 installed LEDs that was counted as at in May 2019. So we, in May 2019, we counted it. Excuse <coughs> and this was what was there, the lows that was there. The manual switches are many. That is what we observe from the preliminary investigations, which we will go to that. <coughs> Excuse. And the distance between them in most cases far. As a result, Ken University maintenance electricians and security officers start switching lights on as early as 3:30 p.m. every day and turn them off as late as 12 o'clock noon in the morning. Good, so because of this that was happening. This brought a change in the usual 12 hours of light usage to about 21 hours light usage time. Okay, so this is what I mean by that. 
looking at this one this is supposed to be the normal light usage hours here looking at the graph here and it's usually maybe it start from 6 and end at 6 so it's 6 p.m in the evening then 6 a.m in the morning so the usual 12 hours that's supposed to work but here is the case that this is the usual 12 hours but um, based on the wastage they were turning lights on as early as three o'clock p.m or sometimes two o'clock noon so this was and also they were turning also off as late as 12 o'clock or 11 30 11 o'clock a.m so because of that it added this wastage to it so this wastage here between this side and this side shoot um, the usage hours to this point that is about 21 hours instead of the usual 12 hours that is supposed to work so this it was what was happening so the normal light usage at the campus instead of the normal 12 hours light street light usage the, um, it changed it was it changed to before we did the installation it was actually this before installation they changed to 21 usage hours this knust street light usage hours okay so that is what i mean by that okay so um because of this usage a uh, change in usage um hours and um, um, the it affected the energy consumption as well of the street lights that had been installed because now they were consuming more because they are being used at all our times that we don't need them okay so this is why the system needed to come in to come and correct these problems okay good so let's continue good so that's still on the project idea and the concepts so the use of photocell was what was already uh, the what another means of that we were trying to um curtail the problem to tackle the problem that was happening so we are using photo cells so the use of photo cells by our observation switches also to automate the on off operations of the street light was inefficient and this was due to partly due to the component failure and disturbances such as shadows from the moving objects animals and humans and trees and this because like KNUSC is a place that have a lot of trees and other bushy, this thing, nice shade around. So it means that when the wind is blowing, the shrinking of the trees, or can put the dancing of the branches of the tree, that the shrinking, the trail of the tree, this thing, the trees will actually the shadows covered on it. And when also animals pass through the surface of the this uh, devices, the photo cells then they trigger them on so like the photos were coming on and off on off on off intermittently and this was also over utilizing the contraction and expansion principles within the photo cells and that was causing the photo cells to also um, um reduce their lifespans and they were also damaging and also they were also not working effectively so in short we realized that the use of photo cells on campus wasn't efficient so because of that then we realized that's an alternative efficient and effective approach uh, is required and we need that to control the street lights so so that we can also promote the demand side management that the dsm policy on the energy efficiency policies of the 
Ghana government approach. Okay, so me, that is John Kusi, a senior technician at the electrical engineering department. Um, I, based on the, my project work in BSC, develop a switch that offers an efficient and effective control of street lights. And based on the challenge I've already discussed, the KNUSC switch, which I named after the switch I developed, the K switch, um, is an SMS timing based outdoor lights switching device designed to automate the on off operations of a cluster of street lights. And uh, I need an initial implementation and testing. It was required to also, to also demonstrate its superiority over usual photo cell switches and other conventional time based. Um, automatic um, switches. The case switch provides functionalities such as automatic switching of the lamps, remote switching of lamps, as well as remote monitoring of the on-off states of the lamps or the street lights. The successful implementation of case switch will enhance outdoor visibility, security, also reduce power wastage and increase the lifespan of street lights. And this was what we expected to gain as a result at the end of the project. Project methodology. So I followed this methodology in order to design a case switch for KMC campus street lights. The first thing I did was um, preliminary investigations and I was assisted by KMC maintenance engineer and her team and we conducted that preliminary investigations and it was a wonderful exercise with her and her team. There were the other maintenance officers that also helped me a lot. Okay, so um, and also I did budgeting, payback period calculations and analysis of the survey data with assistance from Dr. E. K. Anto, Electrical Engineering Department, KNUST. And this were done to put together a working proposal to the then Vice Chancellor, Professor Kosi Obri Danso, an able professor, wonderful man of KNUST. And the next step that I did was to do the assembling of devices. And I saw I did the assembly of devices and installation of the devices. So we did the installations. The monitoring, education, and correcting was done. <clears throat> For the monitoring, we all know that we're checking and see, and also the correcting, see if there are mistakes on it. But for the education, since it was a new device, we needed to educate the electricians at the maintenance department, and also we need also to educate um, the street officers who usually turn the street lights on because we realized that some of them were still turning the lights on in the conventional way thinking that the switches need to be switched on not knowing that they are automatic switches that has timer input within it such that when it's 5 30 the light itself will come on so we needed to do further education to let the people to sensitize them and create awareness of the functionalities of key switch. So these were done. So that is what I mean by education of the switches and the personnel in the aspect of switching the lights. Okay, so um, let's say in the aspect of switching the lights, okay. So, good. Then, preliminary investigations. So, some of the observations made at the preliminary investigations are as follows. <clears throat> so, we observed that at a pharmacy junction at uh, 11.30 a.m., we realized that the street lights were on. And when you come to the hall six, the staff quarters at 10, 15 a.m., 
that part you realize that the street lights were on. And this observation was not just done for one day. Several times and we were checking and it was the similar times we were experiencing the same thing. The same thing happens at the college, uh, or college of the health science place. And that part too, the streets were also, the street lights were also on. So we made these observations and we continued to observe them for some time and realized that this has been happening for a long time. Okay, sorry for the marking. Good, so <clears throat> let's take our marking out so that I can continue. Good, 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 okay, very good. So let's continue. Okay, so <clears throat> criminal investigations continues. So we did, we did some federal investigations and we also realized that we have some 40 switches on Kenya USC campus. Some of the switches were 40. <clears throat> so that means some of the lights were actually not going off. They were on 24 hours. But based on the graph, the chart area on shown, the one that we just saw, the area on which, which I showed. For looking at that one, you realize that there are averages that have been found to determine the usage hours to be 21. But in actual fact, there are other lights that were always on because the, the, the switches that were operating them weren't functioning well. They were 40. And the other switches to that were not even working well, and they also were dangerous to human interaction with them. They are very dangerous for human beings to even go near to think of switching them, especially during raining seasons and also in the nights and the rest. It was very difficult to operate in such environments. And such examples were these ones. And there were a lot like that. There were a lot like this kind of um, haphazard arrangement of switches, contactors, and some look like bent, others were fully bent. And all those things are there. Then those images are there. That we took a lot of images of them. Okay. So these were challenges that was affecting the lights, the lighting operations of KNUSC campus, as well as the street lights are concerned. These were the challenges that were happening there. Okay, so the other ones was we also realized that, as I earlier once indicated, um, that that some of the <clears throat> photo cells were also not working to the best uh, ability that we expect them to work. Okay, so uh, these are photo cells of engineering that was recently installed at College of Engineering that in, in the, at the back of the yes and that were not working. Uh, and the engineering auditorium that were not work. Budgeting, payback, and proposal. So the preliminary budget was done. So this was the budget that was done. And the budget took into account a lot of components that were used. Let me say that there are certain components within this budget that I, that time, <clears throat> I added them, but now the the price, the cost on the things needed has been upgraded and, and the cost has reduced drastically because it was a new thing. I needed an opportunity to build them, and I think the KNUSC, the vice chancellor, gave me that opportunity, and now I'm able to perfect the system, and the cost is very very less than what you're about to see. It's very very less now. Okay, so we needed to get a GSM SIM, HNLL, which now the SIMs that I'm using now, a, SIM, a GSM mode I'm using now for the system. We also needed to get an uh, Art Mega, um, Adrin, uh, Art Mega a microcontroller, uh, okay, for that one. So we are using um, this Art Mega 328P for the programming of the system as a microcontroller. And the total budget was uh, because the total budget is not does not only include the build of the system, 
but also includes the other work we needed to do because some of the switches were many and we needed to join them together okay about three poles was having one switch controlling the lights and if you are building a system to control them, then you need that the system is able to control a cluster, a cluster of them many of them about 80 can be controlled at once if only we give it the right contactor maybe we have 60 amps or 80 amps because each of them is 150 watt led so based on that you use the nominal voltage of 230 volts and you can calculate the current expected current of the systems and you can able to know so that you know that when a fault occurs, what is the likelihood of the rise of the current and those things to be able to select a right contactor for it and this system was able to control about 80 to 90 street lights at a go at a go so because the system is able to do that we were able to join some of the lights together connect them together in clusters so that in classes of 40 50 60 35 20 and also maybe in 85 and the rest so that we can able to control them at a go okay so based on that uh, cables has been used okay and also um we have to also use contactors we also have to use other small small tools and other things that was needed like drainer machine and the rest and all those things counted to this amount so but now uh, we have a lot of the tools available now and now i think um the place uh, if we are coming to do the same thing for you we can now economize the cable and also we have able to reduce the components and this thing to the best minimum that is optimal so we have optimized the system and I think the cost not be like this one now. But at that time, this was the cost. And even this one was okay. Because when we did the payback, because the payback was about one and a half months when we did it. Because we estimated the usage of the time of the street lights equivalent to money. And based on that, we were able to calculate the payback. And realize that about one and a half months, this amount of money will be covered. That and um, this payback will take care of this amount of money that we are going to use so based on that the proposal was done based on these points i've just given to you and the assembling of the device began <clears throat> burning boots loading and sketches and programming were done so i use arduino and arduino interfaces ide to do the programming on the microcontroller itself, but I not actually use the Arduino board, but I use it to be able to program my microcontrollers. And I believe if you are an engineering student listening, maybe if you follow what I've done and you want to do something similar, you can do it. And if you want to contact me, my contacts are displayed, so you can contact me for any assistance that I can give to you. Okay, then you can contact me for that. And if you are doing your research in any area related to what I've done, or you are using any idea or any programming te techniques like the one I'm doing, you can contact me anytime and I'll be there to assist you, to share knowledge with you and also to help your system or your thesis or your research becoming a viable one. Okay, so thank you. If you need that, you can do that. Okay, so we did that also. Then assembling of advice continues. Then um, I did the soldering myself. <coughs> I circuited buildings. I designed my circuit. So this was the circuit boards. Then I also did the soldering myself. So I did the soldering. Then after that, <coughs> excuse, the weather is here is not something. Okay. Then after that, um, this was the finished products. So we came, I came out with this finished product, but this finished product needed to be um, tested. So I took it to an exhibition at Cape Coast University where we tested the, the prototype of it. So I designed the finished product, we mount a, pro a prototype and we tested it so that those who have a part of the exhibition at that Cape Coast, this thing was given opportunity to send an SMS to the devices. Okay, so the SMS to the devices. 
so that they can be turning it on and off, on and off intermittently as and when they please to test the robustness of the device that has been built. Okay, so this okay, so this part was done as I said. Um okay. So installation of the devices. So we started the installation, so we installed them. Still, I was also as assisted by the maintenance department, the electrical uh, se session, and they also assisted me installing the devices. So this is ongoing installations of the devices. <clears throat> okay, so a session of the installed map of the installation devices. So the map of KNUST. So you see that a lot of devices were installed. And if you are checking, this switch 4 is a device that has been installed. This switch 5 is also a device that has been installed. And this switch 12 is also a device that has been installed. If you check this one, controls 56 cluster of LEDs. And each of them is 150 watts. Uh -huh. So that is what I mean by cluster of LEDs. This one con controls 52 cluster of LEDs lights, that is the street lights, and each of them is 150 watts. And this switch four. So this is how you know, some of them show their switches, uh, the, the LEDs they control are small. For instance, this one controls just six because of the way it has been positioned. There are just six there, so we needed to just give it its own um, switch. So this were done. So this, so there are a lot of switches. So you see that this is a switch. This is also a switch. So this is just a session, a session of the map of where we install them. And if you check, this is the quanti, quanti runabouts. So this is actually Pajo Stadium. This is the Pajo Stadium. So if you check, then this will be the Agric. Um, a great junction. This is a great junction. So because this is the AGRC road, and so this is a great junction. So you see that it has been stored very well. So if this is a great junction, then this is the the PV of N Avenue. So you can clearly see that KNUSC IDL building is here, and switch switch four is actually uh, the switch controlling the KNUSC ideal um building okay good so mm -hmm. let me take this things off good so <clears throat> this is what i mean by the switch. so this is uh, the work that has been done so far and this is just a session of the map of the works because of the time i cannot show all of them so the installed device mostly look like this way but some of them are packed in a junction box that we are not going to see them like this uh, but it's actually this is what is inside the whole thing with the contactor and the whole thing but some of them with the contactor in the system are put on a junction a junction box inside so that it's not exposed for you to see as the way you are looking at it now okay thank you so we can continue okay go so monitoring correcting of installed devices so monitoring was done and correcting was also done and so this is what i was doing so you can clearly see me that i was monitoring the systems i was checking the system and i was also doing a follow up cor uh, correcting because there are some of them were having challenges and it's a new device and also i was also facing the education part that i was telling you about where i needed to educate the security officers some of them and also some of the maintenance electrical session people and so that you know what it is well, because of that there were a lot of challenges so i needed to visit the site all the time do monitoring and also do some uh, correcting of the devices and and the rest okay so this was what i was doing in that time then project results so after the installation we observe it for the number of 
times that we want. This was the result. So we realized that before the installation, the usual 12 hours light usage is this part. But the wastage was this part. These hours were added to the usual one. So it becomes this plus this. So this was the wastage. So we needed to take this wastage out. This guy. We needed to take him out. Like, I mean, let's not see him. So that this wastage can go. So because of that, after we did the installation, then we were able to reduce this guy to the minimum after the installation. So this was the wastage now. We were able to reduce it to the minimum. This was the wastage. After reducing this guy to the minimum, then um, we checked. So this was the wastage. So it means we were able to maintain the usual light usage hours. This can was street light usage hours and we're able to reduce the guy to the smallest minimum. This is the normal light usage without any uh, wrong usage time. And this is it. But we're able to reduce it. So we're left with this small uh, guy here that maybe one day we also may be able to eradicate him completely so that the whole thing becomes the normal usage <coughs> hours. So based on what was done, um, we were able to gain a lot of benefits from reducing the losses because the energy wastage was converted to money so that we can check the amount of money that were being lost. And since we were able to reduce that, then monies were gained. So based on that, the project results continue. The installed case switch device reduced 21 hours <coughs> light usage hours to about 12 and a half, like 12.5 hours. About 41% reduction in lighting usage hours. Yes, that is amounted to about 41% <coughs> reduction in lighting usage hours. And this brought a saving of about 1666.425 kilowatt hour energy daily and 46659.9 kilowatt hour monthly. And I used 28 days as a month calculations. Okay. Then, hence, based on that, <clears throat> we did some calculations and realized that this saved. 37,141.3 Ghana cities uh, every month. And we use a business tariff rate of 0.796 Ghana cities per kilowatt hour. And this is reported on Google. So anytime that um, you, uh, you check the business tariff rate of Ghana electricity, and this is the current business tariff rate as for 2019 and that was done so based on that we use that to determine the energy in terms of uh, the money in terms of the energy that has been saved and we realize that <coughs> amount of 37,141.3 Ghana cities has been saved every month and in fact it's continuously being saved because the system is still being run and it's continually being saved. So if I'm giving a needed help and a needed push, I could install the system even for the whole Ghana and I could even link them together so that we can use the SMS to control them. We can also monitor the streets as know which one are working, which one are not working. We can even add security cameras and those stuff to the street lights. So we don't need to install further security lights, poles, and the rest around the this. And the, the mere presence of a street light can be a, a security light. At the same, so that you can monitor people from it. At the same time, um, it also be saving energy because we'll be turning the, the lights could be turned off on and on at the right times. And can also be remotely monitored and controlled. And 
if I'm giving the needle push, all this thing could, can be done. And I don't know, I'm doing it, but you're not hearing it because nobody is actually letting you hear it. And it's like that. And it's like that. But if only, if only you decide to help and let the right persons who need to hear this hear it and decide to let them try to talk to them for them to help then we can do that for ourselves if we don't help ourselves nobody is coming anywhere to help us and for my little this is what i'm doing and you can see the energy and the money that have been saved and nobody is talking about it because this system has been running for about one and a half years now because i said 2019 and you see that we are almost 2020 is almost getting to an end so you can kind of see that it has been running and a lot of people are aware of it okay but you don't hear people talking about it you don't hear people talking about it even my award you, you did not even hear about it, about it yeah so normally when you are doing something good you don't normally get support it's like that and i don't fault people and uh, you don't fault people because maybe me myself when people are doing something good, i may not be able to support them or i may not be talking but this kind of attitude is what we all need to change if you really want a way forward for ourselves and for our kids and for the generations unborn and we have to stop blaming or casting um, insinuations at people thinking that they are the one causing our downfall. Sometimes our actions are calculated way of either bringing ourselves down or lifting ourselves. And I'm asking you personally, looking at the energies that just cutting the usage hours, I'm able to save it. and the monies that we are gaining currently. I can assure you that if I'm given the needed push, this could help a lot. This could help a lot. And I'm counting on you um, to give me the needed assistance if you are listening so that we can all <coughs> help ourselves. Okay. The work of an engineer is not because you can speak better. In fact, ability to speak better makes you maybe a newscaster or orator or something. And also, maybe not because you can write better or you can remember things faster. Uh, ability to think and innovate is, uh, is deep knowledge that brings creativity and that also introduces um, solutions to the world. And that is the most important key thing. Then when that is done, then those who can speak well can pick they advertise it and also try to sensitize people about it and also try to let people know what has been done then those who are also and uh, maybe having the best remembering titles can remember the procedures and other stuff so there are people that bring stuff so i may not be able to advertise my things well i may not be able to uh, maybe give you proper english vocabs that were able to explain it well for you but i am the guy that is able to innovate i'm the guy that is able to bring out something and this is my part and this is my contribution so i'm counting on you who can do this better than me able to explain better than i'm doing to carry out the next button for me and do that presentation skills and do that um, ability to explain it better and let people help so that together we can join our talents together fuse them and make it a more brighter shining example to be able to help push ghana and for that matter africa forward and we have to do it nobody will do it for us okay so let me continue okay so in continuing it i think and let me take the sorry let me take the marcus phone out <coughs> okay so in <coughs> let's box on so these are my references so you see that based on this i have um uh, proposal for an sms so there is a uh, 
just uh, dear Kusi, Kwame Nkrumah was on this, uh, is on a proposal. It was an SMS Wi-Fi remote control because when we were doing it, we wanted to use KNUSC Wi-Fi for that. That was the assessment until I realized that I need to take the Wi-Fi out and bring a program, a programmable timer in so that the timer itself will do the job. So a human beings will always be turning the thing on and off. Uh -huh. So we want automate, automated control. So I took the Wi-Fi part out, okay, and brought time parts on it. So a proposal was submitted in 2019. I wrote that proposal and submitted to the Vice Chancellor of KNUSC. It was approved, and that's why the project was able to um, commence. Then I also get some references from the uh, Grover uh, Petrol Prices .com, Ghana Electricity Prices. That is where I was able to get the current, the 2019 tariff rate of electricity. At that part, meaning the 0 0.79, this is that I was telling you about. That I use it to calculate for the energy equivalent of that. <clears throat> then I also studied at the International Institute for Energy Conversion, Demand Side Management Best Practices Guide. And I also picked something from another one that is um, the Rashi, uh, E and Rashi A, that is demand side management, residential and commercial end uses. Okay. Then I also picked something also on the sustainable energy uh, regulation policy for Africa. I picked something from that. I also picked something from our own professor, Professor Emmanuel from Pong and E.K. Uh, and, and uh, Anto and uh, Professor Ochre, P.Y. Ochre, assessment of energy wastage in street lighting, journal of um, multidisciplinary engineering science studies. And also, of course, my own report, case which saves 37,141.3 equivalent of energy every month. Case which saves 37,141.3 equivalent of energy every month. 37,141.3 Ghana cities equivalent of energy every month. This is what the system saves. And this is a report. I gave it to media. You didn't hear it. You didn't talk about it. Okay. So it means that any my, my department we are working on it. They rely on the report, and we are based on the report. We are even presenting a further um, what we call it a fund request for so that our neighboring um, cities can also enjoy that. Like Kote, Ayediase, Ofoli, Krum constituency areas, and the rest can also enjoy that. So my head. And the other lecturers in the electrical engineering department are assisting me in that, including uh, Dr. Poku, also from mechanical department. He is a KNUS energy efficiency consultant. And Dr. and Professor Frempong, yes, is also uh, the electrical energy uh, consultant for KNUS. He is also the head for electrical department. They are all helping me and they are relying on their reports. But you do not hear about it, it's not even counting because nobody is really uh, pushing it. Okay, so people can rely on the report for some time, oh, yes, uh, okay, but to push it out for people to know what you are doing, sometimes it's for you yourself to do it or for someone to help you do it. Okay, so but they are doing well helping me, and I think for the mere fact that they are even looking at the report and even assessing it and maybe trying to find out if there are mistakes in it and also relying on it for other publications and other future works is good thing they are doing but i think others like media and other people might also help push this report for others even see it it was written in 2020 um, when i did the assessment of what i've done but it's still there and you are not hearing about it so this uh, presentation is just made for you to understand what I have done and what I can do and how this can be improved. And when it's well improved, we can connect it to our 
street lights and outside like community lights and the rest and we can able to control them to reduce the losses to the minima that the wastage of Ghana energy will go very very low because a chunk percentage of the energy generated goes into wastage and we need to reduce that whilst we are trying to find alternative source of energy to support what we already have in the thermal and the hydro power type of energy that we are having whilst we are trying to bring solar energy in even trying to see if ghana is capable of generating wind energy and the rest okay there is also a need to reduce the wastage of energy and this is the aspect that i've taken on my own to somehow do it and i think there is one important personality i've not mentioned the chancellor of KNUSA. <clears throat> that is nana santehini otun for osei tutu yes he has been a motivating factor and when i won the award he he challenged me on my own to do something to help and that is why i tried as much as possible to not just rely on the award and be happy that i won an award but to try and change the system a bit to be able to suit a real practical thing like a real street light so that i can really control things and based on the motivation the challenge that the chancellor asked me and he gave to me and that i needed to do something like that i mean the auto i mean auto for was said to do something um based on that i decided to carry out this and i was assisted tremendously by the vice uh, chancellor of KNUSC at that time professor kosi obri danso and able assisted also by his uh, pro vice chancellor his professor dixon and i think that um, he is now she is now the current vice chancellor and i think they did very well in helping me come out of these things and i was able to do it well but what i needed to do is i needed uh, people to understand the system and i also needed help to be able to implement this for if not the whole ghana maybe some part in kumasi communities big streets and other stuff so that we can able to reduce the wastage and the losses the intention is not to gain money but the intention is to help the nation built and to save the nation huge money that could also be used to channel in other areas of importance like the one district one factory they are trying to do the free shs they are trying to do the good roads they want to construct and the rest these monies could be channeled into that to help who knows one day tertiary education like universities it will become free that we don't have to pay school fees but if we are not able to reduce this kind of wastages then university uh, wage bills and energy utility bills will be very high public utilities uh, public um, institutions and hospitals and the rest will carry a lot of high huge electricity bills the street lights will add to that and at the end government has to pay huge electricity bills in as wastage costs that did not amount to anything but we have to pay for it anyway and at the end money has to be go to, to the energy generations again where we do not even use that kind of energy and this money could have also be channeled to other areas so i think that helping this kind of projects is good and i'm counting on you for your assistance Thank you very much. This is John Kusi. And you can call me Engineer John Kusi. Okay, and this is the project that I've done. And its purpose is to reduce energy wastage in the outside lights, community street lights, and our usual street lights so that we can able to save energy and save money as well thank you very much and thank you for your time i hope you look for me
you encourage me, you say nice words to me, and also give me advice. And also, you assist me to find a needed help to be able to push this, if not for the whole nation, at least for the whole Kumasi. And this system is able, if able to work effectively, we can even talk to our neighboring countries for them to do the same. And that can also become a source of income for Ghana as well. Thank you very much for your time. And it's nice talking and explaining my systems to you. Thank you very much.